It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going the other way. I'm sure you recognize those words that Charles Dickens wrote in his classic novel, A Tale of Two Cities. They seem to me as accurate in describing our current day as they did in 1859 when he used them to describe the city of London of that time. One of the things they point out, I think, is that we are every day confronted with or offered a choice, whether we're aware of that choice or not. The choice is how we are going to move through our life, how we are going to show up, what actions we are or aren't going to take, and what meaning we make of the world around us. There's a story you may have heard about the shoe factory that sends two marketing scouts to a so-called developing country to study the prospects for expanding business. One sends back an email saying, situation hopeless, no one wears shoes. The other scout writes back triumphantly, glorious business opportunity, no one wears shoes. They have no shoes. So it's a reminder of the power of our own perspective. The perspective we hold about the world and our place in it is incredibly powerful. It can support us to go out and be the best version of ourselves, or it can keep us trapped in the kind of thinking that doesn't serve us or those around us. And while there is without a doubt an abundance of stuff going on in our world that could make us want to pull those covers over our head and just say, wake me up when it's over. I don't think that's an answer we can ultimately feel good about. Nor is it one that aligns with who I believe we are called to be as progressive Christians. But I'm not here today to share a purely Pollyanna message with you. In fact, it's exactly because there is so much that we could despair about that I want to simply remind us today of some good news. Raise your hand if you could use some good news today. Yeah, boy, me too. So say we all. Good that we're here together to hear some. All right, so before I share this good news, I want to let you know that you have an active part to play in this sermon today. So there's a statement that I'm going to periodically ask you to, uh, to make. And the good news is you don't have any lines to memorize because it's printed right in your bulletin on page four. So if you would find that right now, it's the title of this sermon. We're the ones we've been waiting for. So that's going to be your line. So periodically, I'm going to be cueing you, okay? So whenever I say, because what we know is, that's the cue, because what we know is, you're going to respond with, we're the ones we've been waiting for. So we're going to try it together right now. So here comes your cue. Because what we know is, You guys are naturals at this. That is excellent. All right, onward. So, about this good news I mentioned. Here it is. We actually have much more ability to influence and create positive change than we give ourselves credit for. I want to repeat that. We actually have much more ability to influence and create positive change than we give ourselves credit for. You know, I think it's so easy to sit back and praise other people who are doing big, shiny, amazing things. We see on TV or the internet or wherever it is about so-and-so. And we sit there thinking, wow, you know, look what they did. And when that happens, I get curious about what our, what our next thought is. Is it, that's so cool, I feel inspired to go find my thing and do my thing, or it could be, don't ask me how I know, it could be, gosh, I could never do that. Those other people have a level of courage, talent, 
looks, money, chutzpah, that I just don't have. But God bless them and the work they're doing. That's great. Um, question, how many of you are aware of uh, CNN's annual salute to heroes that they do? Just raise your hand if you kind of know what I'm talking about, and it's fine if you don't. It's a special program that CNN puts together every year that honors everyday folks who are creating some kind of significant contribution in the world. And I think that's terrific. The only thing I wonder about is that this term hero is kind of a loaded one, I think. I think it perhaps can get in the way of our own ability to create positive influence in our everyday lives. Because this term hero can, you know, can have us thinking about really famous people like Gandhi or Martin Luther King Jr. Or ordinary people who find themselves in a really dramatic situation like a, you know, a house fire or a traffic accident and they, you know, they save lives. Let me state today's good news in another way. My belief is that ordinary people living our ordinary lives can create extraordinary results. And I hope you don't mind me considering us today ordinary folks. I sure consider myself ordinary folks. So in the context of our sermon, we're ordinary folks here today. Are you with me? All right. So, you guys, I'm so excited to tell you about a man named Curtis Jenkins. You may know about Mr. Jenkins. He lives in a suburb of Dallas, and he drives one of the 480,000 school buses that operate in the U.S. every day. You may have seen him on CBS Sunday Morning a few months ago. Raise your hand if you, know, you kind of know who I'm talking about. Yeah, some of you do. Janelle, you've got it. Thank you. So I want to read to you from a transcript from this story. And I've tweaked it a little bit since you're not seeing any video that goes along with it. And I've added a few details that I found in other articles about Curtis Jenkins. Okay, here we go. You can see why someone might hate being a school bus driver. The early hours when the weather sours, the abundance of responsibility, combined with the absence of eyes in the back of your head. Nevertheless, Curtis Jenkins loves delivering those little ones to Lake Highlands Elementary in Dallas, Texas. The school's principal says Curtis goes way beyond the responsibilities and duties of a bus driver. I mean, that bus is like a family. The principal then shares about a conversation with a parent who says her child is excited to get up and come to school because he knows Jenkins will be there to greet him each morning at the bus stop. These are my children, Curtis says. These are my community. I love them all. Now, to establish community, he starts by giving everyone responsibility. Curtis gives some examples. This is one of the police officers, he says, pointing at a young boy who smiles proudly as he hears it. Curtis points out a girl with a pink backpack. Oh, she's an administrative assistant to the president. Everybody working together to build a yellow bus utopia. Now, every day, once they have arrived at the school, but before he lets them out, Mr. Jenkins shares a thought or a reminder over the bus's PA system. We're going to care about each other, and we're going to love everybody, right? Curtis asks the children. Yes, they respond together. Curtis uh, goes on to say, I put time, effort, love, and care, understanding each and every one of those kids. Now to show his love and understanding, Curtis gives presents throughout the year, each one personally selected with that child in mind. He gave one girl a t-shirt with a picture from a book that she had made. I'm hoping this t-shirt inspires her to keep on writing books, he said. Over the years, he has brought these kids bikes, backpacks, handed out cards on birthdays, and turkeys at Thanksgiving. He has spent thousands out of his own pocket, and yet, and hear this, and yet, if you ask the kids what they like most about Curtis, the gifts don't even come up. The kids say stuff like, he really cares about us, and he's really kind. And he helps anyone in need, said Ethan Engel, a fifth grader. He said the bus ride is often the best part of his day. He goes on to say, my mom got divorced when I was only four. He's the father that I always wanted. In some ways, I wish my dad could have been like that, Ethan said. Now, Curtis Jenkins' assessment of his life's path 
is simple and spiritual. I'm always walking in the light of whatever God has asked me to do. Now Jenkins doesn't care much for terms like fame or hero when it comes to his work with students. Yes, he knows that a lot of recognition has come his way this school year, and it has. But he says that's something to be shared with the children along with the school teachers and the staff. There is no I on my bus, only we. We did all this together, he says. Jenkins said his desire to be kind to his kids is partly inspired by his Christian faith. But he said he doesn't talk up to the kids about religion at all. Believe in love, Jenkins says. Love exists. We can love each other. We don't have to believe in everything the next person believes in. And the story finishes with this. We make the mistake sometimes of thinking certain jobs are more important than others. But Curtis Jenkins has made his job important. And in doing so, even created his own salary. As he's, I mean, he does get paid, obviously. But as he's receiving one of many hugs from his school bus family, he says, that's the paycheck right there. If I can get that, you can keep the money. I want to repeat that last part. We make the mistake sometimes of thinking certain jobs are more important than others. But Curtis Jenkins makes his job important. Well, how? I mean, is he famous? No. Well-connected? Probably not. Is he financially wealthy? I don't think so. None of those things matters. Not one of them. What does matter is that Curtis Jenkins decided. He decided to take action from exactly where he was. He drives a school bus. And he has a vision in his mind and his heart of how he would like the world to look, which is strongly informed by his faith. So he acts from exactly where he finds himself. An everyday person doing an everyday job, but doing it in a way that I'm pretty sure is leading to some extraordinary results. Results, by the way, many of which Curtis Jenkins will never know. He will never know about them. So Curtis Jenkins and his yellow school bus community are a reminder that we have the power. We have the power to decide what positive impact we might create from exactly within our everyday lives. When we recognize our desire and our willingness to do this, I believe that's all that's needed. We don't need, we don't need to wait for somebody with more energy, more money, more connections, or more anything to show up. Okay, and I'm about to cue you. Because what we know is... Excellent. So now let's bring this a little closer to home. I want to invite you to just take a moment and to think about someone in your own life whom you have known personally, someone you've known personally who has been a really positive influence on you. It could be a teacher, a preacher, a parent, an aunt or an uncle. It could be a friend. Just take a moment. Bring that person into your awareness. Just imagine that person, whoever they are. Got it? Good. Now, raise your hand if your person was a, a famous or even well-known person. Anybody? No hands. Raise your hand if your person was relatively ordinary. Mine was. Yeah. Ordinary people having extraordinary impact. The poet Maya Angelou tells the story of two friends meeting unexpectedly on a city sidewalk. One friend compliments the other on the sweater she's wearing. The friend wearing the sweater says, Oh, this sweater? Why, you know, a good friend gave me this sweater, and I haven't talked to her in a long time. I think I'll give her a call. And as it turns out, that friend who got the call desperately needed that call when it came. And all driven by a simple, everyday, perhaps throwaway comment between two friends. Another example where an ordinary person doing a very everyday thing can have an extraordinary impact. And here's something to keep in mind. Most of the time, 
as I say, we aren't aware of our impact. You know, CBS this morning or CNN don't show up to do a story on us. What I think we are asked to do is to live our lives willing to be of service, to keep in mind what Jorge and Penny reminded us of just last week. And that is that at the root of it all, it's really pretty simple if we would only let it be. It's about the power of love and showing up from that place. Now, I want to share another example with you. We're going to bring it even closer to home today. So I want to share an example of the way you, yes, you, sitting right there in your pew right now, is having an impact. You are positively impacting everyone else here. Imagine coming to church on a Sunday and being the only person in the congregation. I mean, the preacher shows up, the choir's here, the organist is doing her thing, but you're the only one out there. What a different place this would be without the power of us in community with each other. You are an incredible part of this community just by showing up and by being present. You know, it's easy to, it's so easy, isn't it, to sit here wondering whether what we do makes any difference. And so let me just name some names. Dorothy Gorman, Mary Ann, El Ray, over here, the Mullerys, Rosemary, Linda. I could go on and on. Those folks just paid me a little fee to be mentioned in today's sermon. But you can see me later. Uh, I could go on and on. I, seeing you here has a positive impact on me. Now, I may not even say hello to you on any given Sunday. It doesn't matter. You have a positive impact on me because you're here, because you're sitting there, and I want you to know that. And it's just so easy to lose, to lose sight of that fact. So, so how might we go about doing this? You know, be showing up and finding our thing and showing up in this way. First of all, I think it's by reminding ourselves that we do have the ability to be a positive influence. And then looking for opportunities for doing so. Whatever they might be. I mean, you get to decide. Because what we know is... Okay, I'm going to give you one thumbs up for that. The next one, we're going for two thumbs up. All right. And even though we're the ones we've been waiting for, as it turns out, that doesn't mean that it's always easy or simple. Sometimes it is. And sometimes it can be scary. I think about the story we read today about that boat on the Sea of Galilee. And Peter, in that moment, when he has to step out of the safety of that boat. And the thing I find particularly interesting about this story is that when Peter keeps his eye on the vision... In this case, the vision of Christ across the water beckoning to him. When he does that, he's good. He's fine. It's when he suddenly takes his eyes off of that vision and allows his own fears to become his focus. That's when the water doesn't hold him. And so I think that may be pointing to the power that comes from staying focused on our own vision as we step out of our own boat which again, can feel pretty scary sometimes. But when we're willing to step out in faith with a vision of how we want some portion of the world to look, no matter how wide or how narrow, that's when we find the strength to do it. Christy uh, read so well the poet, uh, the, our poem today. The poet uh, David White reminds us of the power of unseen forces to support us. By the way, he wrote that poem some years ago for a group of Boeing employees, which is why he brings in the, the uh, imagery that he does. He talks about the incredible power of air when it moves around a wing aerodynamically. And he invites us to be willing to give ourselves over to the unseen elements. He says in part, so may we in this life trust to those elements we have yet to see or imagine and look for the true shape of our own self by forming it well to the great intangibles about us. That element, air, is unseen, and yet its power is very, very real. And our job, our opportunity, is to show up, to align ourselves with those forces, seen or unseen as they may be, and simply do what we can do. And it can sometimes feel like a leap of faith. Yes. 
Sometimes that's what it is. So, I encourage you to first remind yourself on a regular basis of this good news that we're talking about today. And then to ask yourself, well, since I'm one of the ones we've been waiting for, apparently, what might I do today? What might I do this week? What, what kindness or encouragement might I offer? What opportunity to support somebody else might present itself today? I believe our only job is to flip on that awareness, to turn on that awareness, to tune our internal radio dial to station WMID. What might I do? And see what kind of message comes through. And more good news. We get to be inexorably ourselves as we live our life. We are not asked to be anybody else than exactly who we are. We are not all asked to do heroic things. Yet we know that in living in a conscious way, with our awareness turned on, and with a willingness to show up in this way, to be kind, to operate fundamentally from love, it's very likely that we can help bring about extraordinary results. Curtis Jenkins does it every school day, Monday through Friday, at least. So I think we're asked to find our thing, whatever that is, and then to do it using our hands, our feet, our face, our voice. It might be related to our job like it is for Curtis. It might be related to our role in our family, our role here at CCSM, neighborhood, city, state, country, world. It may be a very quick thing, like the way you make eye contact with a stranger and smile and say, good morning. It can be a million different things, can't it? Your only job is to be open to a moment's or a lifetime's inspiration and to be willing to act even when, and maybe especially when, you aren't guaranteed of any kind of result. More good news. The result is not up to us. It's up to God working through us. Curtis Jenkins is producing extraordinary results. After I saw his story and was so moved by it, I decided to see if I could connect with him. So I took a very 21st century step of finding him on Facebook. And I'm not a big Facebook person, but I reached out, I found him. I reached out to him with, the, you know, the friend request. And I will tell you that I was thrilled when he said, yes, I'll be your Facebook friend. And I reached out to him and I told him how much I admire what he's doing. And I told him that we here today at CCSM were going to be lifting him up as an example. And I asked him if he might have a message to share with us about this notion of having a positive influence. And he said, Sure. Here's his message for CCSM. Well, what I wanted to say is, all we have to do is trust in the Lord and do what the Lord asks us to do. If I change one child, that's all that matters. That's the reason I do what I do and why I go over and above my entire job because I have a bigger job and that's being on the mission from God. So, in closing, my sisters and brothers, do not be discouraged and do not be afraid. Turn your spiritual radio to WMID, what might I do, and go forth. Show up. Do your thing and be completely and confidently yourself while you do it. Because what we know is Amen.